Hello, my lovely weasels and the people of the internet. Nesha is a Warframe that has gone through a pretty big roller coaster recently in Dante's Unbound update. In today's video, where I think he is finalized, we will talk about the Warframe itself, the nerves, the buffs, everything that happened, and talk about if he is viable right now. And I do have to say, at the moment, he seems really, really good. But Without any further delays, let's quickly get into the passive, being it allows you to slide 60% faster and also 35% further, which is very nice. Uh, we do have the first ability, Firewalker, increases your movement speed, leaves a trail of fire behind you, and we're gonna leave this ability in the trash because we're gonna put Dante's Dark Verse. This is going to be doing a slash damage in a cone, which is going to be very nice, and it is gonna be doing a lot of slash damage, especially on enemies that are inflicted by our fourth ability which we will get to. Uh, Blazing Chakram is the second ability. This basically you throw a Chakram, uh, you can teleport to it if you press the 2 button or the equivalent on the controller as well or you can hold it down to throw it further and faster and also teleport to it. It does heat damage and gives enemies extra drop chances for health and energy orbs which is going to be very good paired with Equilibrium. We have third ability, Warding Halo. Uh, this will basically give you damage reduction up to a certain point depending on how much damage you actually absorbed. And this is going to be very good, and you want this active always. Uh, the and the Acolytes can remove this, keep that in mind, but you have 3 seconds of vulnerability when losing it, and also activating it as well, so that is going to be very nice. And utilize that time so we can survive and kill the Acolyte, or at least get away from him. And then Divine Spears, the fourth ability, the new king ability, and the one that got the new augment. So, uh, I don't know, I think I'm pretty sure I didn't mention it, but Divine Spears, uh, or sorry, Divine Retribution is the augment up on the screen right now and this augment has been introduced with Dante's Untitled Update. First of all, they didn't do anything, it just increased your, uh, I guess, status damage on enemies that are impaled and also spread all the status effects to all impaled enemies, which allowed it to basically nuke entire rooms, almost tile sets. Uh, well, not tile sets, but a large area and then they were nerfed uh, by 50% reduction to range, which wasn't good. A lot of people were mad and a lot of people were very angry, especially me, because I just made a video, uploaded it, and they instantly nerfed it, so that was pretty amazing. But now it's only reduced by, as you might have seen, by 14 meters and max rank. Now, we'll talk about that, is it viable or not, right now. Uh, quickly, I do want to say it does kill enemies and it does impale enemies behind walls and behind objects as well. So it's very, very nice. It works much, much better, for example, than Dante's abilities uh, did a couple of days ago. But how does the build work? Well, this is the build that we use for Neja. We are focusing on all of the negative aspects. We want to focus on range to increase that negative aspect and put it up as much as we possibly can. With, my, with all of this setup, I have 39.2 meters on my fourth ability and that is a lot. Uh, after a certain period, you're going to be killing so many enemies, it's in just incredible. Uh, we do have a minimal duration because we want the ability to last as least as possible. Divine Attribution, Transient Fortitude and Precision Intensifier for here for Power Strength. And this will increase our multiplier, which is very good, alongside Molt Augmented, the Growing Power. And Arcane Blessing is a flex slot. Use what you want here. I love Arcane Blessing. You can use whatever you think is going to be pretty good. You can even try out Arcane Fury to do even more damage with your primary and talking of which, we will get to it. I did want to say the Archon Shards as well. Uh, for the Archon Shards, for this Warframe, we don't really have anything special. One for 10% extra power sank, two for casting speed, and we also do have uh, one blue one that is going to be giving us uh, energy. Actually, two blue ones and one giving me additional 50%. 50 energy so basically a total of 125 energy because we do not have a primed flow mod or flow in general uh, now the primary as i wanted to mention is going to be the torrid and cornin uh, the main point of this weapon and this build right on the screen on right now is to apply a lot of damage and a lot of slash in general now beam weapons are very good for this build because they have a fast fire rate and they can apply a lot of statuses in a really short time the convectress is for example a weapon that i tried the tenant flux rifle as well 
And you can also use the Tenant Cycron as a secondary, uh, the Kuvenu Core, uh, the uh, Okya Core, I think it's called. Yeah, it's this weapon right here. Uh, I probably, yeah, there you go. Uh, the Okya Core, that can be used as well. And uh, that is going to be pretty much the same principle going for Viral Slash uh, as much as you possibly can. And then you need one weapon that is going to be pretty good at killing Acolytes. In my case, it is the secondary, the Latum. This is what I use to kill Acolytes uh, because status effects and spears don't necessarily work on acolytes and they will pummel you and also Eximus units can be a little bit difficult but with the torrid you're pretty much safe. The melee weapon can be personal choice. I for example use the current prime in the gameplay but one of the weapons that I truly recommend is going to be the reaper prime. This is the build that I use for my reaper prime and that is going to be really good because the heavy attack of the reaper prime can basically one shot or I guess insta kill uh, the acolyte if he is of course a low enough level. Keep in mind after like after like 250, 60, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but up to that level, you're pretty much safe, uh, and especially if you get a damage increase by maybe an arcane or something like that. But we do have the focus school as well. Uh, we have Neramon, oh sorry, not Neramon, but Madurai uh, with a power sling and these two notes, uh, power transfer and the sling strength. These are going to be very, very good and they're going to be useful at higher levels. You don't necessarily need to use them. One is going to give you 50% candlestick speed, the other one's going to give you 40% uh, power strength. So that's going to be very good, but you can use it a little bit later on. And now, talking about the companion of choice, the companion is Nautilus with Hellstrom. Uh, these are the builds right here. This is going to be for core in primarily to drag enemies in and this is an amazing crowd controlling ability that is going to help you out a lot now you do have 39 meters range but having enemies closer is a little bit better here you can try out for example the panzer rope of Isla. that could be a pretty decent option uh, you can for, for example use deruga with arc coil that's going to apply electricity damage you can use that and then drag enemies in like that Sorry, not drag enemies in, uh, but uh, utilize Archon or uh, Stretch, there you go, uh, to gain yourself a little bit more energy if you find yourself running out, even though you shouldn't, uh, but those are a couple of options for companions as well. And now, let's talk about how you're supposed to use the build. Well, first of all, uh, you just activate Warding Halo, gain a little bit of, uh, you know, damage reduction, which is going to be very good, and then just activate your fourth ability, your first ability, use your primary, secondary, or depending on which weapon that you chose, and just kill everything that is poked up on stick. And that's pretty much it. That's how the build works. Uh, there's nothing too incredible special about this. The more statuses, the more slash. If you feel the duration is a little bit low, change out the mods a little bit to put in auger message and so on and so forth. It is really flexible. Uh, if you have some questions, do leave it in the comment section down below. I'll gladly answer them. Uh, and that's just basically it. In general, that's how you nuke everything. And you can get around 100 kills per minute, if not more, depending on the spawning of the enemies. But that has been it. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, do leave a like, a comment, but do subscribe for more. And this has been the Gaming Weasel, over and out.